welcome in this uh, new episode. Today we're going to talk about the Stout machine. Hello Eric, can you present yourself and your company please? Yeah, Eric Hecox. I'm the uh, Senior Director of Farm Support Services for Tanner and Anna. How many uh, machines, uh, Stout machines, do you have on the field? Uh, currently between our service department and our internal farming ops we're running eight machines. I've heard that you started to work with this machine a long time ago. Yep, correct. So uh, when the idea came about, probably in 2018, uh, Jeff Anno was kind of spearheading his own, I guess, upstart. Uh, he created the beta version of this machine and ultimately being connected to the Tanner and Anno families, the beta versions ended up out in our operations uh, where myself and my guys kind of put them to work to see what they could do. What were the key challenges at this time? Yeah, so currently the biggest challenge that I have as a service provider is, is labor. Um, you know, five years ago I had five to six hand weeding crews. Each crew consists of 25 to 30 people and as of today I'm, I'm down to two. So what we're seeing is year over year diminishing return of labor and I think what it is is just our employees are simply aging out. So in order to continue to operate we have to come up with solutions that allow us to uh, continue to farm with, with a reduced labor force. And we are in an organic field today? We are currently in an organic artisan romaine field, correct. How many hectares of organic uh, acres, if you prefer, do you have? Uh, yeah, so with our artisan program, we're looking at about 15 acres a week, 365 days a year. So uh, we farm in four different locations. So they run pretty much all year, all yep. days? Yep. And uh, on which crop do you use them the most? Uh, so we really focus on the leafy, so the romaines, artisan romaine, um, broccoli, cauliflower, not so much. Culturally, the guys are able to crowd and take care of the, uh, the weeds that way, but I'd say predominantly we're looking at the leafy green. And how do you implement them in your uh, organization? Do you make one pass, two pass? When do you use them very early? Yeah, some guys will try two passes, but we find usually one pass. If we can get 90 to 95% of the weed set, uh, we'll go ahead and send the hand crews in after to clean up because there's some weeds that you're not going to be able to get that grow close to the basal point of the actual plant. But if we can get 90 to 95% of that set, then we reduce the hand crew's time needed by 95%. And I can see uh, today that you use like two of them in the same field. Do you usually use them as a fleet or more like Yeah, single? so what we like to do is pair them together in Salinas. The average block size is about 10 acres. Um, so these guys can cover anywhere from eight to 10 a day, but to ensure that we get in, out, and allow time to move to the next location, we put two together get the fields done quick because you know the grower will come behind us and he has cultural practices that will need to happen after this whether he's going to re-irrigate potentially put a spray out um, we like to be in and out of the day if possible how many um, acres can you cover in one hour like an average yeah so with these machines if we're having a good day we're about an acre an hour an acre uh, an hour an acre an hour yeah i would say in a year you're probably looking at 1500 acres of machine roughly Yeah, so essentially what you got here is this is the Stout Smart Cultivator. Um, and what the cultivator is doing, it's actually utilizing artificial intelligence to decipher what is crop and what is weed. And as we pass through the field, we'll go to the back of the machine here. In a minute, it's going to we'll run through the basic mechanical function. But to start, I mean, really, the heart of the machine is inside this box here, which is the computer. Uh, from an operator standpoint, the computer is very straightforward. Uh, once it's powered up, you basically got a start-stop function. There's really only two things we focus on out here in the field. The first is we have a preset of spacing both before and after the plant. And essentially what that's doing is we are setting the tolerance of risk. So the tighter we bring this number in closer to the plant line, as you can see currently we are 3.3 inches behind. That's when it's going to open. And at 2.7 inches on the leading edge is when it's going to close. We can tighten that up, but you run the risk of then hitting the actual plant. So the riskier you want to be, you're going to take out more weeds, but obviously there's a very fine line between risk and reward. 
Do so, you modify that depending of the size of the crops? Yep. So it depends on the plant to plant spacing because what will happen actually if the machine, if you set the risk, the tolerance so tight, the machine actually will know that it can't make that move and the blade will default open, which is on the safe side. Right? As opposed to taking out the crop, it's going to go ahead and just remain open and it'll actually traverse around two individual plants. Um, so ultimately what happens, the operator, when he starts his day, we've got a working camera up top. He's looking down to see kind of what that offset's doing and he'll get off of his tractor and he'll make the adjustments here as he makes his first initial pass. And once he's set that way, uh, we can go ahead, we can adjust height up, down. The side shift's automatic, it follows a line. But uh, the only other offset that they're putting on here is the blade speed. So we can speed up and slow down the blades. If you notice you're throwing too much dirt, we can go ahead and slow the blade speed down to try to accommodate to where you're not flipping dirt into the actual heart of the plant. But do you really adjust this very often? Or when you start, you just... Yeah, uh, usually it's just at the beginning of the day. Once it's set, we're good. How long does it take? So it's about 10, 20 minutes? 10 minutes. About 10 minutes to 10 get minutes. going and okay. you're good for the day. And the camera on, in the back is to control uh, the just, weeding quality? Yeah, it's to give the operator inside the cab just visibility because when you're in the cab of the tractor with the hood down, yeah. you can't see any of your implements. So for him to understand and make sure that A, the implements are functioning properly, we go ahead and put that down and it allows them to offset. Ideally, as you've said earlier, I don't know if we mentioned it, we do run two together. Mm -hmm. But what will happen as we start our day, the operator in that unit will come over here and help him get going and then once he does we'll flip yeah. back and then they go if you're by yourself the camera just affords you the ability to set up by yourself all right so basic function right so right here inside this tube is the camera system and what we call this little down part here the s curve is a backbone so this machine has three backbones on it one backbone one camera on either side of the camera are LED strobe lights and what they're doing is illuminating the bed top so that the camera gets the perfect look at the bed. All right. These here are the actual working units. Uh, so essentially the function is it can go up and down and it has a side shift on it. The up and down function is really important. Uh, there's a potentiometer here on this wheel as the wheel rolls on the bed top. It's actually telling the lift cylinders where the plane of the bed is. So if we have a dip and or a hill in the bed, the unit will actually go with it as opposed to digging and or coming out of the ground. Uh, we can set individual height control of each module up and down. And we have the ability on the back here to set the spacing, opening and closing. We really don't mess with this one too much. It's mostly the height adjust as well as the side to side. So it's working uh, with hydraulic? Yep, it's all hydraulic. Um, no electronics outside of the computer. So all hydraulic hoses to each module. Uh, we've got hydraulic lift cylinders that float up and down. We've got hydraulic side shifting that moves the bone. So if a, a machine moves and the plant line moves with it, this thing will follow it so you're not taking plants out. to change a um, tool configuration in the back depending of the configuration or you usually keep one machine per configuration? No, nah, so we have two of our machines are dedicated to our eight row artisan. Uh, this is six row artisan because it's organic. We transplant it versus drill it or direct seed it. Uh, but essentially what will happen is our eight rows are dedicated to that artisan romaine, artisan lettuce. The six rows we can also convert to run 40s, so we'll actually do a four row 40. Double bed. Yeah, the double bed instead of a single six row 80. What are the key highlights of this machine? Yeah, I think the key highlights of this machine, a, it's adaptability into all the different planning configurations that we have out here on our farms. Um, B, it is a very simple machine to use. And I think for us, you know, we've had other weeding technologies that we've implemented prior to this machine that were all of European design you know, now we have a domestic producer Homemade. That, that we have access to, not only locally, but just anytime we need them. And if there is any improvement that you, you, you would implement on this machine, what would it be? I think it's a continual adjustment on the weed spectrum, right? The machine's not perfect. It does get 90 to 95%, but really what it is is 
myself, my supervisor, these operators, if they're seeing specific weed species that the machine doesn't like, you know, it has to learn. So what we'll do is we'll then call Stout, their guys will log in, see what that weed species is, maybe what, what the machine doesn't like about it, and we can actually adaptively upload imagery into their system to try to continue to refine. You know, I think a lot of the times, historically our mechanics show up with hammers and, you know, big wrenches to fix things. You've got to get beyond that mindset. This is a, this is a different type of technology. It's a very robust machine, um, but it's certainly not an implement of old, like say a disc or a chisel. So you got to be a little more, you know, soft, cautious with it. Yeah, cautious. Yeah. Um, yeah, but as long as you take care of it, ultimately, we've been running these for five years now and relatively problem free. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. Let's have a look on one of the machines so you can present us uh, the key uh, point. Let's do it. Mm -hmm.